Good morning, world. Welcome to another episode of Zendependently Minded. If you are a new or returning listener, I hope you enjoy this episode. If you're interested in more content like this and podcasts in the future, don't forget to stay tuned because it's only going to get better from here. The world is in our hands. Let's do something with it. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Zendependently Minded. So on this specific episode of Movie Minded, I'm actually going to do my review of Martin Scorsese's new film titled The Irishman. I hope you guys enjoy, and if you haven't seen it and you don't like spoilers, don't watch it, don't listen to this podcast, Um, go watch the movie. Set some time aside though, because it is a three and a half hour long movie. But anyways, let's get started with this review. So the film The Irishman is directed by Martin Scorsese. Screenplay is written by Stephen Zaillian. And it's based on the book by Charles Brandt titled I Heard You Paint Houses. It stars Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, Joe Pesci, and the music is by Robbie Robertson. So just to start off, off the bat, this was a superb movie. It was absolutely amazing. Um, There was a lot of things that I liked, and I'm going to follow the same format as I did with my Joker review. First thing I want to start off with, though, are the things that I liked. First and foremost, the biggest thing that I liked was the acting. Uh, That's not going to come as a surprise to anybody who's seen any of Scorsese's movies. He always has top dog actors, superb acting, and it was just more of the same here. Scorsese really came back to his roots uh, with an Irish mob movie that featured a lot of corruption. That's kind of a trademark uh, Scorsese a theme in all most of his movies and the movies that he's most known for like Goodfellas, Casino, The Departed, stuff like that, uh, Wolf of Wall Street that has a lot of corruption in it. It was just absolutely superb acting. You really saw an aged, weathered, um, but emotional Al Pacino as an actor um, portrayed in his character. He plays Jimmy Hoffa, who, if anybody knows, uh, was... He was basically the president of the union, I think, I believe it was in the 60s or 70s, uh, the union was called the Teamsters. Anyways, Robert De Niro also, uh, he was a little more stoic rather than emotional, but he was brilliant nonetheless. He had his few moments where he got emotional, but I'll talk about those a little more down the line in this review. And then Joe Pesci had some of his most brilliant moments as the influential kind of domino effect guy. He started it all with Frank Sheeran, specifically in that truck scene at the beginning of the movie where he helped Frank Sheeran, uh, Robert De Niro's character, he helped him out with a car problem he had and it just kind of started there and the rest is history. For me, Joe Pesci really stole the movie as far as his acting goes, hands down. Um, he He just stuck out the most to me, just knowing that he came out of acting retirement to make this movie. He acted his butt off. Uh, Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci, all three acting legends who, without a doubt, have money for the rest of their lives, their kids' lives, their grandkids' lives. They they have money in the bank for generations to come, and the fact that they came together to make possibly one last movie, um, one really, one last amazing movie like this, and acted their butts off, it was amazing, it was beautiful, and I cannot say enough about these three guys specifically. Uh, One of the other big things that I loved was just how smoothly and effectively they were able, uh, Scorsese and the editing crew were able to weave in and out um, with past and present eras. It was, it was for the most part smooth, it wasn't really that confusing, They use de-aging effect, which I'm going to get into next, but anytime you saw an obviously edited and younger Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci, you knew that it was in the past, and when you saw them old and Frank Sheeran, uh, Robert De Niro's character sitting in that nursing home talking, kind of narrating everything, you knew that it was present. So, uh... After all that praising and talk of things that I liked, those are just a couple of the things that I liked. I wanted to, I want to be 
as general as possible um, and only get into specifics when I need to and leave the rest for you guys to decide when you watch the movie yourself. But something that I didn't like was the de-aging effect. I liked the purpose behind why they used it, obviously, and it was to display, um, it was just to, to feel the era that they were trying to portray, make it feel more realistic, obviously, because all three actors are well past their prime, very old. Um, I just didn't like how stiff it made the actors feel, not only when they moved their mouths and when they talked, but more so just with their movements, like, um, and it, it's, it's, I kind of contradict myself a little bit because I'm going to talk about my favorite scenes later, and one of my favorite scenes actually has the worst de-aging effect in it, when, specifically when Frank Sheeran stomps out and beats the crap out of the guy who pushed Peggy in the grocery store, I believe it's someone related to Joe Pesci's character, um, don't quote me on that, I think it's one of the Buffalinos, I'll have to check, um, either way, it just, he just looked really unnatural, it looked like a robot, it looked like a video game, and I just didn't like it as much, but it's not a big deal because it did not affect how I felt about the movie as a whole at all, um, like I did in my last movie review, in my review of Joker, I talked about things that I felt were unnecessary, or that's the format that I follow in my movie reviews, but I didn't find that there was anything unnecessary. I thought everything worked, um, even the over-the-top cussing, which it wasn't actually as over-the-top as some of Scorsese's past movies, and I just felt that it was natural. Uh, curse words are used to emit emotion, and it was in, there were some emotional parts in this movie. Um, something that surprised me was how invested I felt in Robert De Niro's character, Frank Sheeran, by the end of the movie, um, especially given he had a very stoic attitude throughout the film. He was kind of the middleman. He tried to reason with Jimmy Hoffa because Jimmy Hoffa got very close to his character, and he just, he was the middleman. He tried to reason with Hoffa. He tried to communicate between him um, and Joe Pesci's character, and that was just what he did, and he didn't show too much emotion there, but it made me feel invested into him because he was this guy who was just trying to support his family, um, trying to make a little extra cash when he, uh, originally met, or the second time he met Joe Pesci when he started to work with the Teamsters and for Jimmy Hoffa, it was just to make extra money, and it just kind of started to get bigger. Uh, he started to do more and more and more, and by the end of the film, once you see the toll that it's taken on him and his relationship with his daughter Peggy, it really, for me personally, it just made me kind of feel for him, and especially that scene towards the end when he's buying his own coffin, that that was just something that was it was sad because it showed two things. It showed he had the money. Uh, the thing, the reason that he worked and did all those things in the past and put work over family and killed the people he killed, beat up the people he beat up, uh, uh, trashed, vandalized the things that he vandalized, it was really for the money in the end because he had enough money to buy his own coffin, but he didn't have anybody to spend the rest of his life with. And... That just kind of, I thought that was a beautiful contrast between his real motive behind why he did what he did, even though he'll say it was for the family. Uh, and another scene that really had me feeling for De Niro's character was when he just, he went to the bank, he stood in line, he let a guy go in front of him so he could try to talk to Peggy because she was one of the bank tellers, but she closed her sign and she wouldn't take him. And that was the last that we saw of Peggy, actually. So, next, I want to just go over my three favorite scenes of this movie, like I did with my last movie review. So, the first one uh, was just really towards the beginning of the movie, and it was when Frank Sheeran stomped out the guy who pushed Peggy. Um, it was really just the beginning, and it kind of showed a domino effect, 
and it was a kind of cause and effect of how Frank Sheeran dealt with problems with his family. And it really showcased why in the future it really was kind of the destroying from this point on to the end of the movie. Um, it was just the destroying of his relationship with Peggy because she had a problem. She was too scared, too timid to talk to him about it. But um, Peggy's mom was the one who told Sheeran, Frank Sheeran, about what happened. And he took her with him to the store. He beat the crap out of the dude who pushed her. And that was it. That was how he dealt with it. He didn't give any moral support. He just kind of got upset with her that she had let that happen. And then he used violence. And that was all Peggy knew growing up. And that's why she didn't have a good relationship with Frank Sheeran. And you see it at the end with what I talked about. Um, her refusing to talk to him. And being more sad when Jimmy Hoffa died rather than when he died, assuming, assuming, because I don't think we see that, I don't recall seeing that, but my second favorite scene was when Jimmy Hoffa and Tony Pro try to make amends, or I guess um, Joe Pesci's character and Robert De Niro's character try to work, they try to amend Jimmy Hoffa and Tony Pro's relationship, this is after Hoffa gets out of prison, and he notices that in the public's eye and within the Teamsters Union, he's starting to lose respect, and people are starting to whisper about him and his ability to run the union correctly. Um, he Their plan that I believe Frank Sheeran comes up with is to try to convince Tony Pro to endorse Jimmy Hoffa, and all Tony wants him to do is apologize, and Jimmy Hoffa does Jimmy Hoffa, and he says uh, he says some words, and they fight, and it's 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 just a funny dialogue scene. The dialogue is hilarious, made me laugh, and it just it was another one of the hundred examples of why Jimmy Hoffa fell and why what happened to him happened to him, whatever that was, and it was just brilliant acting by Al Pacino. It just it really. It was very convincing, and it was a great scene, my second favorite scene. And my favorite scene of the whole entire movie was when Jimmy Hoffa awarded Frank Sheeran his award, because this really, um, after Jimmy Hoffa got out of prison, a lot of things kind of showcased his spiral to to eventually getting killed, but this this was the tipping point, pretty much, because Frank... Frank gratefully accepted Jimmy Hoffa's award that he was presenting. Um, he was very grateful. He talked about some things, uh, some memories of how influential Hoffa was to him and how meaningful he was to him and his family. And it was a great scene because for one one minute, Jimmy Hoffa was able to put the BS aside, put the differences aside that he had with Frank Sheeran's friends and his fellow Teamster um, people, uh, union guys, and just present the award. And that scene, after he, after he had uh, presented the award, or maybe it was before, I can't recall. But Jimmy Hoffa basically, uh, he's given an ultimatum, and he sticks to his guns, and he's as stubborn as always, and that really was the tipping point for what happens to him towards the end when he gets killed by Frank. But that's going to close off my three favorite scenes of this movie, and there wasn't a scene that I disliked, actually. Um, but to end this review of The Irishman, I give it a classic rating, because editing, pacing, acting music the music choice was underrated um the score was underrated and i give all the credit to robbie robertson who put together the music for this movie but overall i give it a classic rating and i want to let everyone know who listens to these reviews that you should listen you should watch this movie um it's more geared towards scorsese fans 
mob movies, uh, movies with a lot of long dialogue scenes. Um, it's not for everybody because there's some language in there, but I recommend it to all hardcore moviegoers and movie viewers and film critics. That's going to conclude my movie review of The Irishman. Make sure you go check it out. It is a Netflix exclusive, and I believe, actually, there are some theaters that are playing it, but nonetheless, you should go watch The Irishman. Don't forget, the world is in our hands. Let's do something with it.